Aloha, and welcome to Physical Therapy for a Better Life. I'm your host, Christine Linders, board-certified orthopedic physical therapy specialist. Today, we are talking with former pro beach volleyball player and current coach, Alika Williams, about the benefits of fitness in beach volleyball, regardless of skill. Welcome, Alika, and thank you so much for coming on the show. Aloha, thanks for having me. Oh, this is fantastic. So, Tell me, I am dying to know, so is everybody else. How did you get started in beach volleyball? Uh, well, I, I kind of start from the beginning. I, was, I, was, I grew up on the Big Island, and I, my parents were athletic. They played tennis, and so I grew up playing tennis and played some soccer and was in the water a little bit. Um, but in ninth grade, I was lucky enough I got into Punahou School, so I moved over here to Oahu. And as most people know, Puno is a very, very strong, they have a very strong boys volleyball program. Um, and on top of that, my mom's brothers, the Crab brothers, my mom is a Crab, so Chris and Tony Crab, back in the 60s and 70s and 80s, they're big time volleyball guys. They uh, coached and played at the highest levels um, professionally. And my uncle Tony coached in the Olympics in 84 when they won the gold medal. So upon my arrival here at shoot 1989 <laughs> I got spurned on to this whole volleyball scene and you know once I got to the bug between Punahou and Outrigger and my family and it was it was a, the snowball started and boom here we are you know 30 25 years later and 30 years later and volleyball is my profession now so here that's we are. amazing so you played a little bit of a pro how old were you when you were doing that um out of college, when I played at Santa, men's indoor volleyball at Santa Barbara, and I graduated in 1998. So I was on the tour from 99 to 04, about five years. You know, yeah. got, got my feet wet, played against some of the best players in the world, which was pretty awesome, you know, to go, go up against those guys and the big names. And it, it was a pretty big time in beach volleyball. Men's volleyball was real strong at that time and pretty awesome to play some of these guys who won medals and made the Olympics and were all American and national champions and you know got to rub shoulders with those guys so that was really awesome that's really cool now I don't know for anybody that's in my age did you wear any dig this attire <laughs> you know I I was kind of when I was in high in the 90s beach volleyball I think was at its peak that was when it was really booming so you know what like I said when I came over here in 1989 and through the 90s when I was in college the beach volleyball apparel was off the hook. So yes, all that fun stuff. Whether it was Massimo or Side Out or uh, club sportswear, uh, you know that there was a, the, all those lines that were real big at the time. And unfortunately, it's not what it used to be. Um, the, the sport has shifted as far as apparel, and you know it all goes hand in hand with the prize money and the exposure. But you know, there's still some. I, my my good friend Billy Berger up in California. He's he's kind of taken over the side outline. He's trying to make a little bit of a, of a comeback with that, that line. So it's kind of cool to see. I would like to see that. It's like surfing, beach volleyball and surfing. Every, every sport is triathlon too. Every sport is taken off in a different direction, like apparel lines and things like that. And I think like side out is such a great line. I would love to see that come back. So now let's yeah. talk about you as a coach. I am fascinated with coaches and I'm fascinated with you on how you can coach uh, beginners, advanced, people that don't know beach volleyball. Tell me a little bit more about beach volleyball and how it can be for your life. Yeah, um, kind of just touching back on my history. Um, you know, growing up around the Punahou program, the Outrigger program, they have the beach courts at Outrigger, and you're playing indoor as, as a boy, you know, at the boys' level, and then you go on and play college. And um, for a lot of us, coaching is just kind of like, a, a process and evolution of you as a volleyball player. I mean, you come home in the summer, you need to pick up some extra money. Next thing you know, you're coaching boys a few years younger than you. You're helping out. You're the assistant coach and you're, you're getting right in there and coaching just kind of comes naturally as a player and in that realm, as far as the exposure, you come home, you coach a Puno intermediate team or you coach a high school team and that evolution just began. So, I mean, I've been coaching volleyball since high school, helping out the younger boys and younger kids. And, um, you know, from, from that standpoint, it was, it was pretty easy. 
you know, it, it was pretty easy. Um, and it just transitioned over to the beach because I'd spent so much time playing beach volleyball. And again, coaching is just kind of the way the, the path for me has gone. Um, yeah. And now here I am coaching, coaching. And, you know, I like to not just, I'm not just a coach. I like to kind of throw tra personal trainer, personal coach in there. Um, it, you know, it, it, with my program, I like to consider it a lifestyle. I'm coaching kids, adults, boys, girls, men, women. Um, and a lot of them are just doing it for fun. They come to me for an hourly, weekly lesson. And like I said, it's just a lifestyle. They're just out there to get a workout and have some fun with some friends and continue on with um, with the volleyball that they're playing. So sorry, I just got a call from you. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's just kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah. And, you know, we can, we can touch on my Hunakai service some more as we, we get through this conversation, but that's kind of the history of how I got into coaching and why I am where I am today. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's amazing. I love that um, we were talking a little bit before the show on how, you know, I love beach volleyball. I've been playing and I played in college and I've had all these injuries and never thought I could play again. And then I moved to California from Connecticut and there was beach volleyball and I never knew there was beach volleyball for me. I just watched like Steve Timmons and Karch Karai playing and just love those guys in, in high school, but I get to California and there's all these nets set up. And yeah. so I thought, Oh, I don't think I could play because of my shoulders. I've had four shoulder, four, four surgeries. And I met my friend Scott who said, let's go down there and with the ballers. And we got this purple and pink ball and we would pep around. And I realized I could still play volleyball and enjoy it I didn't have to hit the hard court like with my arms outstretched and and so that's kind of how I got started in beach and I realized wow I can still be a volleyball player and with my injuries and things that I suffered in high school and in college and so when I get to Hunakai Park to meet with you I was we were talking about it earlier how I can have all this stuff going in my mind and I do want to improve my skill and I want to stay in the game how I can and maybe I can't play four hours but when we get there for that hour I get a great workout I get great skill training from you and I just think it's an amazing thing that's why I wanted to share this with everybody because I also know people who come there and they come there because they love volleyball they don't really care if their skill improves they just want to play and they want to get a great workout and so I feel like beach volleyball in a way is for everyone and I want people to know that you know yeah I mean, I think two things that you just touched on there. I mean, obviously, California, Southern California, you know, it's ground zero for beach volleyball. Like you said, the beach is so big and wide. And you know, when it all started, these people, people say, people always say Waikiki is where beach volleyball began, which could be true. Who really knows, right? But the part about Hawaii is the beach is narrow and there's no space. And in California, there, you know, it's, in Hawaii, it's the beach is for the sunbathers, and if there's a little extra room besides that, we're going to put up some courts. But as we all know, that you know the sunbathers was, are what drives the economy here, so that's important that that beach is used for the tourists and to make sure they're taken care of. But in California, there's not enough sunbathers to go around. That's how big the beaches are: <laughs> Hermosa and Manhattan, and it's you know they're down by the water, and there's probably a half a mile wide stretch of beach that's just sitting there empty. Yeah. So, you know, whoever the powers that be back in the day said, let's put up some nets here. So there you have it. Santa Barbara, East Beach, Huntington, Hermosa, down in San Diego. So pretty easy for it to become a lifestyle, a place like that, right? You get the adults. Um, I did do some coaching on the beach up there, and it was great because I would be home during the week in California between events and it stays dark so long up there in the summer. They have these adult clinics and lessons, you know, nightly where they're down the beach till like nine, 10 o'clock to stays late. And these people are in it for lifestyle. You know, they love being with a group of friends and hitting the ball around. They have no problem paying a professional to help, you know, run them through drills, help improve their game, show them how to play the game. So in California, it's, it's the place to be. I mean, it's, it's ground zero for that, that lifestyle. Um, and like you said, the, the injury part, the, the body part, playing on that soft surface and longevity, you get people playing into their 80s. Um, just because non-contact sport, the soft sands, it's not as rigorous as indoor. You know, it's more of a finesse game, moving the ball around. 
not as much of a power game. And as we all know, the power stuff is where you get hurt, the rotator cuffs, um, jumping on the hard surface, the knees, the joints. You know, I got lots of friends that just stuck to the indoor, uh, indoor demographic or domain, whatever you want to call it. And they're busted up. You know, yeah. they, they went and made their money in Europe playing professional indoor. They get maybe 10 years out of it at most. They make a lot of money, but they're not playing much volleyball anymore. They're getting surgeries or getting new hips. They're getting new shoulders. And so, yeah, it's definitely something special about beach volleyball as far as being able to keep on going and keep on enjoying. Yeah. I love that you mentioned the, the soft sand and the deep, uh, the, the non-contact sport aspect of it and compared it to like court volleyball, because a lot of times when I talk to my patients and I talk to my friends about playing beach volleyball and they'll say, Oh my gosh, wow. That's so hard. It must be so hard on your body. How do you do with all your injuries? And I, I tell them that it's so forgiving, like for me to go and run around in deep soft sand is so forgiving. Cause you know what? It's harder on my muscles and maybe on my breathing, but it's so easy on my joints and so much more forgiving because when you land in the sand, the shock is absorbed a lot. I don't know the percentage in the sand. And, and I love it here in Hawaii. It's so amazing because I will give people go to a beach and walk in the deep soft sand as an exercise for Achilles tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, people that have knee arthritis or they have weak hips. I will have them walk sideways in the deep soft sand forward and backward because it's something that could they can do but they can't walk around their block because they're on pavement and there's no better place to do it than here in the islands it's really yeah. just a gift to be here you know it's amazing yeah. and that's the one the one kind of bummer about Hawaii is there's there is a shortage of courts of volleyball courts and it's a false image people get I know a lot of people who they come here and they or they expect coming here with the beaches and the weather but they're going to have tons of volleyball here. And like I said, the beaches are, are too narrow in a lot of places. Um, you know, it needs to be used for other things. So it, it is the one kind of false image that Hawaii gets. I hate to see when people come here and they're like, we, we moved here to play volleyball. And you're like, ooh, you know, it's, it's a little tricky. As, as you know, there's only a few places on the island, public places that you can really play. Um, so it would be it would be nice to see more and not necessarily on the beach but just sand courts put in around yeah. town there's definitely space for them and they are costly unfortunately but you know it's it's gonna always kind of keep Hawaii a little behind like a place like Southern California where it's just courts for miles you know that's where you're gonna get these great especially the girls right now there's so much opportunity the up-and-coming junior girls with college scholarships and opportunity I mean Southern California for women and up-and-coming girls is I mean, they're just producing kids right now. And it's just taking off, you know, between yeah. Title IX and COVID and Carrie and Misty having so much success. And then uh, what's the, the latest gold medalist? I mean, it's just yeah, taking off up over there. It's crazy. The depth and the, the quality of play and the amount of quantity of good players. It's, you, it's definitely a correlation. Yeah, as, as a physical therapist who's been injured in so many places since a young age because I grew so fast and then playing sports without PT or having a trainer, having access to one, I would love to see more of those like park courts set up like public courts because it's such a great way to have fitness. It's such a great way to prevent injuries because of the softness. And it's a great way to have fun and have well-being like a tennis courts and pickleball courts. I would love to see that. I remember I was living in Connecticut and I was driving to Portland, Maine. And there was a park with a court in it. And Connecticut, I lived there. I'm like, we have like so many parks. I, I don't know of a single yeah. one that has a court in Connecticut. But way up in Maine, where it's super cold, there is right as I got off the highway, there are some sand courts. And I think that would be an awesome addition to everyone living on the islands, too. And uh, which yeah. leads me to ask you more. How did you get started with Hunakai? That's a beautiful park with a beautiful court. How did you get into that? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, when I came home from playing, I, I, I was coaching indoor and I get, you know, people kind of knew me as a beach volleyball player around town, whether they're playing in local tournaments at Waikiki or down at the Outrigger or on the mainland. Um, and I just started getting inquiries, just word of mouth, call this Alika guy, you know, help your daughter, help you want to learn to play volleyball. And 
I was just kind of moonlighting and kind of getting creative on where to train people and where to do it, but obviously not having a sand court, accessible sand court. Um, I needed to find that. And I had some good friends that live in the Kahala neighborhood, people I grew up with, people I've known for a long time. Um, and that park is, is owned by the Hunakai Park Association. And like I said, it's made up a lot of these, of the board itself is made up of the neighbors and that's a lot of people I know. And so in 2010, I think in 2008 or nine, the NCAA announced women's beach volleyball is gonna be picked up as, as a scholarship sport. So that was kind of like, okay, I gotta do this. Cause it's only gonna, like I told you earlier, it's only gonna explode. Everything's moving in that direction. So I just came up with a proposal and I, I um, the park, you know, they have other tenants there, the soccer clubs that play there, they all pay, pay rent, helps with the upkeep of the park. And I just approached them and I said, hey, if I, if I come in here um, and build a sandbox here, you know, I'll be the teaching pro here, I'll run the court, everything will go through me and I'll pay you guys rent, I'll pay for the cost of the court. And it's just worked, I mean, now here we are 12 years later, you know, I can't believe it's gone by that fast so it's funny the first week in 2010 was my first week of business um and kind of side note it was funny because i i had to get the sand from waimanalo to kahala and it was a week before a week between christmas and new year's and president obama was in town <laughs> every time he comes here he goes and throws lays off Kelowna point where his mom's ashes are and, you know, with the president, the Secret Service, traffic, they blocked the road. Wow. So I'm waiting, and you got to pay these truckers by the hour, mind you. So I'm, I'm waiting. The, the hole is dug, and I'm waiting for my first inaugural dump of sand with a dump truck. It took about probably 10, 10 to 20 truckloads of sand to fill that box. But, you know, I'm standing there totally, uh, you know, standing there twirling my thumbs and I'm going, where is this truck? You know, I'm calling him. The truck driver's telling me I'm stuck at Sandy Beach because the Secret <laughs> Service has blocked the road. So anyway, it was just a fun story. Like I'll never forget, you know, it was when Obama was in office and he comes and does his Christmas trip here and him holding up my traffic and having to pay the trucker extra on, because of President Obama. <laughs> but anyway. We'll have to We'll have to send him a link to the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It was, it was pretty funny. So I'll never forget that that um, week of building the court, digging the hole. It was all grass before. So I had to take a foot deep out of it by a huge you know, area. And we took all the, the earth and grass out of there and brought sand in. And here we are 12 years later. I can't believe it's been 12 years. I didn't even realize that. I've been in Hawaii for yep. three and a half years. And so I think I knew about you for two and a half of them, maybe, huh? Yeah. Something like that. And uh, it, it's, it's really cool. Um, it's really cool what you're doing there. And I know, I know when I show up, you see uh, younger girls and uh, different age ranges and things like that. And yeah. um, I just, I think it's such a great thing for everyone to participate in. Is there, yeah, I will go ahead. Were you going to say something? Oh, no, just, you know, it, with my service, it's fun going back to the lifestyle thing because a lot of these, especially the parents, right? They're not real educated on the sport. They don't know much about it. And here's their daughter or their son wanting to get into it. And, you know, they, they come down there and they see me training adults and training older people. And they're just kind of scratching their head. And they don't know about that lifestyle we're talking about, right? They, they, they're totally foreign. It's totally foreign to them. They're like, wait, what? You, you train adults and it's just four people and it's just a little group. And and I go, yeah, that's my product. You know, I, I'm, I train whoever wants to come. And if, you know, you're not signing up for a club or you're not committing yourself for six months, you just come for a weekly lesson or a monthly lesson or a one and done lesson, you know, and it, it, I, I try to keep it real flexible and real easy. I, I'm just teaching beach volleyball lessons. Yep. And if you want to get better at volleyball and get a great workout, like we talked about, um, you know, I really like my product. It's it's very unique, especially here. It happens in California a lot because again, there's courts, but here it's it's special because there's not really anybody else doing it um, yeah. with that kind of intimacy and service I give people. Um, so it's really cool. And I've 12 years. I mean, I got girls, kids that I started training. They're getting married now and having babies, and it's just like 
you know, they always circle back. I've been to some weddings and it's just, you know, it's kind of, it's pretty cool. It is an pretty amazing cool. service. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm really glad we're talking about it. I'm wondering um, how is best for people to get in touch with you if they want to get a lesson? Because I think, you know, I'm always encouraging my patients on every realm to do something. It's just depending on what kind of thing they need. If it's something for their mind, if it's something for their body, if it's something that, you know, they want to learn a new skill and they're expressing that to me and, you know, based on what their abilities, not with volleyball, but like physically are um, like, maybe they can't take tennis, but they can play beach volleyball because it's in the sand, but the court is too hard for them. How do people get in touch with you if they want to take like a one-on-one -on -one lesson or a, Hey, me and my boyfriend want to come and yeah. play volleyball with you for an hour and see where we're at, where we're at, or maybe we want to start playing together in a group but you know he didn't play before and i did or i haven't played before or i am terrible at passing i want to improve those skills like how how yeah. do we find you or how do people reach out to you yeah i mean you know i i, I do whatever you want it's fun people the people come to me and uh, i tell them hey i can give you a one-on-one -on -one lesson and they go a one-on-one -on -one lesson in volleyball how is that even possible but you know there's lots of things we can do especially if you're a beginner um even I have girls that or kids that play indoor. They've been playing indoor for three or four years, and you know they've never gotten sand between their toes. Which I always like to say, we're going to get out there and we're going to just kind of learn positioning, and we're going to do tons of reps. We're going to pass a hundred balls, and we're going to set a hundred balls, and then I'm going to set you a hundred balls, and we'll serve a hundred balls. So that's kind of what that private entails, which is a real good starting point. Um, and then as far as I'll get a two-person lesson. That's oftentimes a partnership. There's a tournament coming up. Oh, the two of us just want to get reps together. No one else. Just, you know, you can serve us. We can do drills, working together. So there's just different formats, and they all work well. Three-person lesson, two. Sometimes I jump in there and hit the ball around as the fourth. And then the four is kind of the common one because it's two against two, and I'm on the side feeding in balls and keep them moving. I mean – most people know you you come with come to me for an hour it's going to be a better workout than play playing for two or three hours just because i got a whole bucket of balls and i'm just firing away you know you play a game you serve the ball the point ends someone goes and grabs the ball they hand the ball to their partner they serve it and lots of stop and go yeah. but with with my groups you know we're moving we're getting the workout we're getting the touches as far as um my contact i, I have a website and it's pretty, pretty easy. It's hunakaihai.com. So hunakai, H-I, short for Hawaii.com. Yep. And all my contact info is on there, my phone number, my email. So, you know, if you know anybody or anybody's watching this, check it out, hunakaihai.com. And you can always come down to Hunakai Park in Kahala too. I'm there five days a week. So I'm yeah. there a lot. The guy with the mask on and the hat and the shades on. That's me on most days. Yeah, no, it's great. I'm glad. I'm glad to. I'm glad we're doing this show too because, uh, you know, I don't think I really sent many of my patients uh, to play beach volleyball as a fitness or a um, well-being kind of thing. And so talking yeah. to you, talking to you before the show and today as the physical therapy for a lifestyle and talking about all those things, I think I have a lot of patients who would really love to get a lesson and it would really improve so much of their core strength and everything just to be doing, like you said, the drills, passing a hundred balls. There's so much, every muscle in your body is working to pass hundred balls and you're not even jumping. You're just standing, rounding yeah. your shoulders, working certain muscles and passing a ball again and again is so beneficial to every muscle in the body. If that's all they did for an hour, it's yeah. great. Yeah, and I, I think too, just the, it's such a volleyball, such a beach volleyball is so unique because it is a team sport but it, it's also not it's just you and one other person it's it's more like a partnership a relationship and sometimes that that can be tough that i've seen partnerships well especially on the you know as you get higher and higher level you get some some bad breakups as we call them <laughs> yeah but you know if you're out there having fun and you, you 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 like your group of friends and it's just three other people that you're buddies with I mean, there's no better way. You can go play basketball in a league or you can go play soccer or you can go play, you know, lacrosse or whatever everybody's doing. And it's just a very different, um, different animal. Uh, and you can just kind of bang out your workout with four people. You know, you move it along, you play your games fast. 
get your sweat in, pack it up, go home. And then if you want to take it to the next level, there are tournaments out there to play in. But it, it's a it's a very special sport. And keep going back to the lifestyle. It's it, that correlates to lifestyle. And not to sound biased, but I don't. I think the lifestyle of beach volleyball is, is much greater than those other sports I talked about. Um, as far as just that kind of core group of people you have and, and you can always go play other people too. So you can mix it up. So, and on the court too, a lot, you know, it's just you and me, right? Just the two of us we got to work together. You got to know, be on the same page. You can, even an indoor volleyball, you can kind of deflect the energy off of someone by going elsewhere to another teammate, another personality, but yeah, not no, beach volleyball. Love- I love that you're talking about that. We have like one minute left and I just want to tell every point one thing out that you reminded me when you were talking about the teamwork and the partnership and the relationship. And I know there's times when I can't use my right arm. And so I'm lefty. And I remember playing at the outrigger one time and talking to my partner. I said, I don't care which side I play. Usually I like both sides because of different strengths I have. But I said to my partner, uh, for some reason, I'm having trouble with this. Can you do this? She's like, or she, I said, I'm having trouble with this. I'm sorry. She goes, what can I do to help? And I love, I'm getting goosebumps. I love that that partnership, it's not about me being good and you being good. It's us being able to make up for some of the weaknesses of our partner and helping that yeah. person succeed and what they're good at. And so I remember telling her, you know what, if you can set me here, she's like, done. And it was great. And I said, or if you could stay back because I'm tending to set you a little bit off that she's like done. And I felt so supported. I'll never yeah. forget it. I felt so supported. And it's that partnership, that teamwork. And if you are seeking something like that, it's not like, oh my God, I'm terrible, which I get into that too. It's just the telling your partner, I'm having such trouble doing this. And they're like, what can I do to help? Stay off the net. And, and because I'm setting you off and I feel bad, you're like going to hurt yourself. And so I just wanted to say that too, for everybody that's thinking about doing it, that it is a elevate each other, you know what I mean? And help yeah. the other person out too. It's not all about, oh, yeah. You know, and I think that it really carries over with these girls that play indoor with six people and they're on a team of 12 and there's coaches, you know, they're not real community yet, but you come play beach, you get communicative and then things are so much easier in indoor, you know, it's just like yeah. such a great cross trainer for indoor and communication and aggressiveness and alert and being in the right spot. It's just such a great thing to do to benefit one's indoor game which is what a lot of these girls are trying to do they're trying to go play college indoor and best way to do it is playing on the beach it kind of sounds weird it sounds funny but that's the bottom line life is better when you play beach volleyball and we need to <laughs> yeah. wrap it up alika so thank that you was, so much that, for went fast. On. that was amazing we'll do it again uh Thank you so much for coming on and thanks for everyone who's tuning in to the show today and to thank Tech Hawaii for allowing us to be here. As always, remember, life is better when you listen to your physical therapist and your beach volleyball coach or trainer. Aloha, everyone. (laughs) Thank you, Malos. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.